Jason, great to have you with me here on the show, my latest Money Talks guest. Tech, is it good or bad? Uh, wow, that's a really interesting question. Can I just <laughs> say that is possibly the best researched introduction I've ever seen. I commend you, Liam. It was uh, we do try. extraordinarily detailed. Uh, you've painted quite a picture there. Is it good or bad? Well, of course not. It's, it's not sort of I, – I don't think uh, we can look at it in such polarising terms. But I do think – do you remember when – I think we felt instinctively in, like, the late 80s that – there was something wrong in chucking away all the plastic that we've been getting through. And if you're as old as I am, and uh, respectfully, you look like a, 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 a mature gentleman, you'll remember in the 70s, you know, we were just, everything was plastic meals and microwaves and, uh, you know, it carried on in the 80s. And slowly we were being educated that maybe this was having an environmental impact, that maybe we couldn't just keep producing everything all the time without thinking possibly about the impact it has. And I know that many of your viewers will have different positions on this, but I think it's fair to say that in general terms, the majority of opinion is, uh, you know, and certainly the legislation that, that we've all signed up to would seem to agree that we need to make a bit more of an effort, right? So we were educated around recycling. And most people now, it's part of their daily lives. So I've got three kids and woe betide me if I don't, you know, sort the plastic out from the cardboard, my daughter will be right on my back. So what's happening here is a similar game change, I think, a similar reframing, if you like, around the impact of technology. So can, can I give you an example? Most people in the survey um, that you just referred to, uh, understand that air travel has a big impact on uh, global carbon emissions. So it's about 3% of global carbon emissions. So it's a significant proportion. Would you believe, and this most people won't know, is the production of new gadgets, new technology, new consumer devices contributes 2% to global carbon emissions. That's that's really significant. What that says is that if you're buying new technology, you've got to be aware of the fact that it's up there with air travel in terms of its, its uh, eco impact. I tell you what, uh, you, you can call me a rather mature gentleman, Jason. That's, that's fine. I, do, <laughs> I, I, I too have got a loft full of various Betamax video recorders and other bits of right tech. I can't just, I'm, they'll be worth something one day. That's why I keep telling myself. Yeah, one um, day. A lot of our viewers will be really interested in the idea of saving money, particularly now in the midst of this cost yeah. of living crisis. Tell me a little bit about repurposed tech. I still don't think enough okay. people know about this. You don't have to buy a brand new iPhone. You don't have to buy a brand new laptop. You can still have a really good experience and get a better laptop or iPhone than the one you've got by buying repurposed tech, right? And that also fits in with your... Uh, thesis, your aim of saving on the carbon emissions too, if we're using the same kind of casing twice. Yeah. So look, I don't want to preach to anyone because I couldn't in good faith, could I spend all that time on the gadget show and the time I've spent since on, on social media and working with various brand launches uh, to say, look, don't buy new tech. Of course, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that there are scenarios where we need the latest gadgets, right? We, we might, you might need the new VR helmet for whatever reason. You might need a camera that does a, a new function because you need it for business uh, or even for pleasure. Whatever your motivation is, I'm not here to tell you what to do. What I'm saying is we need to be looking at the scenarios in our lives where maybe we don't need the absolute latest model, right? And I'll give an example, simple example, that many of your viewers will, um, I think, sympathize with is as a parent. You know, our kids put enormous amounts of pressure on us when they need a new phone for whatever reason, the battery doesn't work anymore, the camera's rubbish, they almost certainly don't need the iPhone 13, the iPhone 12 repurposed uh, by the people that have uh, uh, put, pulled all this research together, uh, which is uh, backmarket.co.uk. That's who I've been asked to work with and I've been working with on the research for the last few weeks. And, and you can go there and you can find an iPhone 12 in this instance for um, – a lot less money than you'd pay for the iPhone 13 equivalent. You can also get an Xbox. You can get a repurposed, reconditioned tablet, laptop. Um, uh, and, and so I do think we're going to see a lot more of this. This is really about making us aware that in those instances where we don't need the latest model uh, for our job or for whatever reason, there are some great alternatives. And they come packaged really well. They come with a 12-month uh, warranty. Um, you can return them within, I think it's 30 days if you're not happy with it. So you've got the same sort of consumer rights as you would, would have with brand new products. Um, it, it just gives you a bit of flexibility. And you made the point about the price of stuff. Let's face it. 
you know, this stuff isn't cheap, is it? Especially when it's new, you can save up to 70%, depending on what it is that you're buying. So there's another reason at a time when, I mean, I'm feeling the pinch. I don't know about you. Things have definitely got a little bit bonkers um, in terms of uh, cost recently with everything from fuel to, um, you know, utilities becoming more expensive. So I think every, every, every little helps a little bit, doesn't it? Things certainly have got really tough in terms of cost of living, Jason. And you and I will know from our vast life experience, crikey, more than a century between us, I'm chancing my arm there, of no, experience, joking, that when, when, when the economy yeah. changes, culture changes, social mores change, don't they? I think in many ways yeah. pop music gets a lot better in the middle of a recession. That's another discussion. But, you know, yeah. my kids, for instance, now when the cost of living crisis is hitting, Second-hand clothes are becoming a lot cooler. And, of course, they're Huge, cheaper. Yeah. B- buying shiny new trainers, it wasn't as cool as it was even six or 12 months ago in, in my eyes. Are you saying that this is going to happen with tech too? If you've got a kind of retro mobile phone that still does most things that you need, need it to, that's quite cool if you've got a kind of steam-powered laptop, as long as it does, again, the things you need it to. That may be a bit better than having the latest box fresh blingy piece of tech do you see a cultural change coming i do and and you know you mentioned the culture word because culture is the real driver people often miss this don't they they look at innovation they look at science and they miss out the the people uh part of that equation and when there's a cultural shift it's very hard to resist that and brands that maybe don't understand that often lose out um and there were lots of brands that were that were seemingly immovable from our high street when the shift to say for example moving away from renting videos to streaming services happened, and you would never have expected uh, Blockbuster to just literally vanish almost <laughs> overnight. Um, so, yeah, you've got to be with it from all perspectives, both as a consumer, but also in terms of, of, of your business life. But, yeah, culture, culture is, is starting to become aware of important facts like the ones that we started this interview with. Um, and also, I, I, I agree, I think there's a, there is a feel-good factor. I don't want to patronise people. I, I don't want to be too worthy. You know, I, one of the things I love about GB News is that you talk straight and, you know, I'm not trying to uh, cajole anyone into yet another guilt complex. I'm, and especially when I'm sat here, you know, next to like the latest devices, which are also <laughs> very important. I'm in some of virtual reality and I need a virtual reality device. that's going to give me the immersion or the uh, augmented reality layering of the, the next generation when Apple dropped their glasses next year, which is, is happening by the way, Liam, Liam um, and, and when other manufacturers Neither, uh, d- doubtlessly follow suit to uh, push all that kind of meta layering that's coming. I love all that stuff, and I'm still really enthusiastic about it. But there are other areas of my life where it just doesn't need to be absolutely brand spanking new. And believe it or not, I'll be honest with you, this is my smartphone uh, of choice. It's two years old. Uh, it can still do 8K video, which is completely unnecessary, 4K, and it's 5G. So... There's the message therein. I'm producing content on that all the time, sometimes editing it, like you mentioned in your intro, on the phone. I can do all of that with a two-year-old phone. Jason Bradbury, it's been great to talk to you. I really enjoyed our discussion. We are the Waldorf and Statler of tech journalism. There you go. There's a cultural reference for people who remember <laughs> I love the it. Muppet Show. You, you can have that one for free, Jason. And, yeah, we do talk straight here Thank on so GB much. News. It's what we do. Jason Bradbury there, TV tech Legend, the man that launched the Gadget Show. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.